Xenia, Ohio, a typical Midwest community nestled in the Miami Valley. Like many small communities in the United States, it has a deep, rich history. It was settled in 1803 by pioneers impressed with the area's fertile farmland and scenic landscape. Xenia, which is Latin for hospitality, takes its name from the ancient Greek city of Xenia, located on the island of Crete. And, as if it was written on the pages of some unthinkable Greek tragedy, a mask of fate befell this seemingly quaint community. In nine minutes, changed the landscape and the lives of thousands. Mr. Weather Radar now shows a tornado developing in northeastern Warren County, taking it from northeastern Warren County into southeastern Montgomery County into central Greene County. This storm is severe, a massive storm. The track indicated by the hook in our radar screen is now moving into the city of Zenia. It came virtually without warning, pounding rain lightning, hail, and a churning monster descending from the sky. With winds blowing at over 300 miles per hour, some people said it sounded like a freight train or a deafening wall of thunder. But all agree, the voice from the sky that day was evil. Cars, trucks, buses, and train cars took flight, landing in backyards, classrooms, and family rooms. The winds peeled back the roofs of buildings like sardine cans, cleaning out the contents within. Trees, including some more than a hundred years old, were uprooted as easily as a child picking a dandelion. It would take only nine minutes to level a city that took 170 years to build and change the lives of nearly 25,000 people forever. I'm Jim Baldridge. On April 3, 1974, one of the most powerful tornadoes in history swept through the Miami Valley between Bellbrook and Cedarville. Sitting dead in its path was Xenia. Over the days of April 3rd and 4th, 148 tornadoes ripped their way through 13 states. In all, 330 people were killed and nearly 5,500 were injured. Locally in Xenia, 33 people lost their lives in the storm which experts categorized an F5, the most destructive on the Fujita scale. The destruction in Xenia was unspeakable. Half of the city's structures were leveled. Four schools, including the high school, were decimated. Thirteen students and an instructor were in the high school's auditorium rehearsing the spring musical The Boyfriend. One student stepped into the hallway for a drink of water when she spotted the storm out the window bearing down on the school. She yelled to her classmates and they came running to see the funnel cloud. Moments later, the auditorium was leveled and several school buses tossed by the storm came to rest on the stage where they had been standing just moments before. It would have uh, hit just several hours earlier. I mean, it could have, uh, you know, there were 2,000 students in, in Xenia High School back then. And again, it was just uh, fate, if you will, uh, but I'm, there's no question in my mind when I viewed the, the pictures and the damage uh, after uh, it was all said and done that, that there would have been massive fatalities and probably uh, I would have been one of them. All the students survived. Ten churches also lay in the path of the storm. At the First Church of the Nazarene, 100 preschoolers crouched down in a small basement as the twister roared through their town. Miles back was four at the time and was one of those children in the church. They had us holding hands, walking single file line, singing Jesus Loves Me. We must have sang that song, gosh, we sang it a lot that day. And I remember being huddled in that basement forever, hands over the head in the dark, and it seems like there was an adult on top of me at all times. Because I remember I kept saying, I don't want another tomato. I don't want another tomato. That's the only word I could come up with that it sounded like. Dozens of businesses along Detroit Street were turned into rubble with the store contents dropped throughout the city. Most people caught at work during the storm survived. But that wasn't the case at the A&W root beer stand. Five people, including a mother, father, and their small child, lost their lives. 
One person who survived here, though, is Jenny Hull. She was five at the time. I remember a lady coming out and saying there was a tornado, and I didn't know what a tornado was. And then we went, the ladies had come in and take cover, you know, there's a tornado. So we all ran inside the building and remember getting underneath the table or something. We got under something. And just remember hearing noises and just remember seeing things come flying in, look like birds and stuff. And I remember yelling for my mom. And Janie says a guardian angel was with her that day. That angel was Dorothy Rowland, who laid on top of Janie to protect her from the storm. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have been here. I feel like she was my guardian angel at that time, and she was there for that reason to save me. I just, if it wasn't for her, I don't believe I would have been here. I just think she was, she's my hero. Dorothy Rowland was one of the five who died at the root beer stand. At the time the storm swept through, a 57-car Penn Central freight train was moving through Xenia. Thrown around like a child's toy, tons of twisted steel blocked many city streets. At Central State University in Wilberforce, just a few miles east of Xenia, 15 buildings, most of them classrooms, were toppled. The Central State Student Union was spared but damaged. Several students found refuge there from the storm, then emerged afterwards to help the injured. The chaos was unimaginable. Families were separated, and damaged phone lines made it impossible to make immediate contact. Unable to navigate through the debris-strewn streets, people abandoned their cars and took off on foot searching for their loved ones. And I remember it kept running through my head, why isn't my mom coming to get me? Because a lot of the kids were getting picked up by their parents. And I just kept thinking, well, my mom's not coming to get me. What's going on? What's going on? Well, she was trying to get me, but she couldn't get there. Trumbull Street was hit hard by the storm. Five people died. A man and woman, both 82 years old, and three children, eight, seven, and three, all from the same family, lost their lives. Chuck Haynes was four years old when the storm hit. He was at his babysitter's home, also on Trumbull Street. And then the babysitter's husband came in from the outside after he had been watching the neighbors and to me he went wild. He went, he grabbed his kids, he grabbed uh, my sister and started throwing everybody in the basement and at that time I didn't have any clue as to what happened or what was going on and I froze. I didn't move, I didn't run. He snatched me up and put us all down in the basement and pulled the door closed and then we heard a loud uh, thunder and um, after that we dug our way out and at that point it, you could tell it was a storm and I asked if it, if it could come back and uh, they said no it can't come back and I remember seeing light sky on one side and dark sky on the other. His mother shot an eight millimeter film of the damage in their neighborhood the day after. I couldn't understand why my mom was crying when we got out of the basement um, my mom was walking up the road and uh, she turned around about halfway up the road and we hollered and waved to her and said we were okay and, um, and she was crying and I couldn't understand why she was crying because uh, I didn't really quite understand what was what was going on. Coming up you'll see how in the hours following the storm relief efforts begin and how local communities, state officials, and the President of the United States come to the aid of Xenia. When Xenia 74, nine minutes in April, continues. We're on the, on the south side, come up old. Within hours of the storm, the relief efforts began. People from all over the Miami Valley came to help, moving debris, clothing the disheveled, feeding the weary, and recovering those lost. Almost immediately, the National Guard was on the scene, establishing a command center and working to restore hope and security. Martial law was ordered, and curfews were strictly enforced. The dangers that relief workers and guardsmen encountered were very real, and the arduous task of recovery did not come without sacrifice. Three days following the tornado, a fire broke out at Cherry's Furniture Store when a kerosene heater tipped over. Two National Guardsmen were in the basement sleeping 
and were unable to escape the inferno. After spending the last days of their lives saving and serving countless others, Donald Meek was a member of the 178th Fighter Wing, which came to the aid of Xenia and was in the furniture store just minutes before the fire erupted. I heard about it when when I got up. Command post had said what happened, and uh, I said, "Man, I was just there, there in the couch up uh, top of the steps when they said where the flames had come up in that area." It just got through to me how the Lord had seemed to have spared me, but didn't spare them. It, it, it was it was hard. This is the Arrowhead subdivision, which looked like a war zone when I first arrived here just after the tornado struck. I'd been with WHIO-TV only about 18 months at that point. I anchored the evening news that night, nervously watching our new weather radar as that hook J sign of the tornado made its way out of the southwest towards Xenia. My own home in Bellbrook was also in the storm's path, but it skipped over my neighborhood. My wife and infant daughter huddled under a sink touched down a few miles away, then jumped into the air once again and landed with its full fury here in Arrowhead. Yeah. Went and looked out my back door to see if, if it was what I thought it was. And, and so I just kept looking and there it was. And it was just getting louder and louder and louder. And so I knew what it was. So we so were uh, standing in the house getting ready to eat supper. And my brother-in-law called us and said there's a tornado on its way. And I went outside. Seeing it swerving around, seeing housetops coming up and everything. And Many state officials came to Xenia to offer assistance and assurances. I interviewed uh, then Ohio Governor Rocky, John Gilligan. Uh, Hi, Governor Gilligan, what is your assessment of the situation here in Xenia? Well, the tornado evidently went uh, virtually right through the middle of the town uh, from the southwest, uh, moving in a northeasterly direction, and cut a swath maybe three city blocks wide. Even President Richard Nixon came to see what had happened to Xenia. We have received a big lift from coming here, interestingly enough. Uh, people have been very kind to say, thank you for coming. Uh, it's, you help us. You help our morale, somebody said to me. Well, let me say that when we come here and find people who have suffered uh, so much uh, in such a devastating way, uh, with the outlook rather bleak, but who are still standing up there tall and strong and saying they're going to see it through, it makes you realize that this country has got a lot of guts. It makes you realize that this town is going to live. It makes you realize that this town is going to come back. Some remnants still remain from that fateful day in April 1974. Paul Evans is a farmer and lives on the outskirts of Xenia. His farm was in the path of the tornado. Well, explain to me what that is. That's a piece of roofing off of somebody's house or barn. Been hanging there since 74. How'd you find this? What happened? Well, right here, we're sitting right in the path of the, where the tornado went. That's what's just been hanging there. So I never went up to tear it down. I just said, the heck with it. You stay up there. Nature can do strange things to us real fast real fast, so never know. Coming up, Xenia lives and rises up from the rubble and returns as a growing and prosperous community. Three people, ten of them children, died in this tornado. The youngest, a one-month-old infant boy. The oldest, a 98-year-old woman. Nearly 1,600 people were injured.
To the people who survived the storm, the names of the dead on this plaque outside Xenia City Hall serve as a reminder of an ordeal that brought the community together that gives the people a common bond. It was that common bond and bold perseverance that brought this community back from ruin to prosperity. What comes out of tragedies is neighbors helping neighbors. And that is, uh, that's a wonderful thing. And this community does it better than most any other community around. I don't see a lot of people moving out of here. Uh, they just keep rebuilding. I know one family who has rebuilt three times. You know, that says a lot about their faith and strength and courage. We're a close uh, community, and again, that's part of the, uh, you know, the, uh, the draw to uh, Xenia. And it, we are the uh, community of hospitality, and certainly uh, uh, we value our relationships, and we continue to, to nurture those as the years go by. Though the city is rebuilt and continues to move forward on the path of progress, the spirit of the people is still as strong as it was on that Wednesday in April 1974. Roger Workman was living in an apartment just across from Xenia High School when the tornado hit. And then, of course, once it was over, we came out of the uh, basement, and the first two things I seen was uh, the Xenia High School. And man, I tell you, that <laughs> got to me. But there's more to his story of survival. Janie Hull, the little girl who survived the devastation at the a w root beer stand, lost her husband in early 2003 to a heart attack. She was in need of another miracle, and through several twists of fate, she was about to get one. Sometimes I don't understand why, you know, God spared me and not the others. But you said that you had an answer to her question of, I don't know why God spared me. <laughs> what is that answer? Well, I, to me, it's the answer to that would be that they spared Janie so she could meet her dad, which I am her dad, and, and I didn't know this for 34 years. And uh, and now my wife, me and Vicki, uh, never had children. And now we got a beautiful daughter and two be <clears throat> beautiful grandsons. Uh, they mean everything to us. And uh, you know, we're very thankful. And in a poetic twist, Paul Evans, the farmer who still lives on the outskirts of Xenia, found a page from a church hymnal floating through his field shortly after the tornado hit. When the world's on fire and the darkness veils the sun, I'll live on. Yes, I'll live on. Men will cry and to the rocks and mountains run. I will live on. Yes, I will live on. Xenia does more than live on. Xenia thrives. The phrase Xenia lives was plastered all over the city in the months that followed the tornado. It's only a bumper sticker, but it serves as a reminder of the strength and the determination of those who call the Miami Valley home.